most people in America are familiar with what is and isn't lawful. Most people in America want to keep the law and not abate the law. Most people regard human rights. Most people know what is and isn't lawful. Most people in retail do not want the rage of their company president or the marketing department for ruining themselves by bad publicity for ill-begotten, ill-behaving employees. When I talk about these things, we're talking about risk management. Risk management is something that my friend and longtime colleague who used to attend my business forums on a regular basis, Jeremy Houchins, used to complain to me or talk to me about what he kept saying to me as a native Indian person, that his spirit guides were expecting him to understand me in a different way. And what he talked about when I visited the church that he attended with his family was what he felt was my gifts and skill sets were in risk management. He corrected me at no time. He is one of those guys who trains himself in building websites and builds his whole life around that skill set. But in life, as in our work, we have the right to keep training ourselves, keep certifying ourselves, keep pursuing things that we find interesting. Whether we share those things on LinkedIn or not is up to us. Someone has been playing in my LinkedIn profile. Someone has been adjusting people I've been linked to. Someone has been reconnecting with other people that I don't even know and didn't even connect to because I have an incredible visual memory. And that visual memory recognizes faces or names. Not always at the same time, but it works for me in my life. It's sort of a gift of my late father. He was really great with names. At the same time, you can introduce your, yourself to me, and five minutes later, I might forget your name. It's one of the reasons that most of us who are networking in an actual business circle where we're a name tag of some sort. And we do have the right to market ourselves in different parts of our life to satisfy what everyone knows is the right to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. Which means in one channel for my business of a certain program in my business company, I might address myself with a moniker. And I have two for my spirituality and one for my business. But in life, as in our rights, we have the right to control our information. What I mean is we have still the right to privacy of information. The Privacy Act is usually intact when people regard our privacy. If a human being who is a part of our family of origin or a family of choice does not regard our privacy, then they've abused their rights over you or over me. You see, privacy belongs to the individual who has the private information that is confidential. And privacy belongs also in propriety because we have the right to proprietary information. When I built my Japanese language program for the Indianapolis community, I became highly regarded by the local Japanese language school that actually teaches the native Japanese. Because when they would get a call from a non-Japanese, they would encourage them to connect with me. That was because they knew me to a point, but they also knew my wife and how sweet she was all over the place. And openly they regarded that there was no one else professionally trained enough, educated enough, seasoned enough, or experienced enough to train people in Japanese. When I closed my practice, I closed it up after 15 plus years. I just needed to do that because at the time, the downturn in the economy was impacting families and they were no longer pursuing Japanese. Chinese was now being offered in and around the local school corporations, which allowed people to think about how the Chinese are becoming more and more influential, not only in our communities, but in our churches, but also across the land in technologies, sciences, pharmaceuticals, and, well, sometimes land development. In life, as in the world today, we have to be very aware of what is and isn't lawful today. It is not lawful to take someone's intellectual property and use it. At the present moment, I have found someone has posted my book online in my name with a new ISBN, which I did not authorize or pay for. That, of course, is a catalog system that allows you to access some work. I never wanted my book, Soul Keepers, The Soul Strings of Our Life, posted online for purchase. I know that seems odd to people, but my business involves moving myself 
into events where I'm speaking as an orator and I'm selling my work. You see, then I'm not sharing the benefits of what I invested in personally printing my books with anyone else online. You see, I don't have to participate in affiliated marketing and I don't have to make my work available online, but someone has lied to themselves about the rights and technically committed copyright infringement. And I don't know how they got a copy of my book. If it's a law enforcement officer that refused to give me back my property bags out of the Indianapolis Marion County Jail, then that's on that officer's life. When I went to pick up my two personal bags of my personal property, which were mainly my metaphysical things and some clothing that was special to me and a lot of religious items, <clears throat> because my faith is the strongest part of me, I was offended to not be allowed to have it back. Two bags of very important content went missing. My bank cards, my life insurance policies, my medical records perhaps, but that doesn't matter. What matters is how those people abused me and my rights. They promised they would be available there, but one of the officers touted who was keeping me in the cells there that it's true, it might not be there when I get back because they did not properly catalog my information in those bags on anything at all and it was a personal attack by those officers, both black, both white, both male, both female. I even saw my own personal glasses on one of the officers, and that was in the bag. It was a unique experience because the officer, who was a female, which I didn't like taking me to the shower as a male, was a person whose last name allegedly on her name tag was Sam. She was a curmudgeon of sorts, and I did my best to never say a word to her of any way because she tried to open the shower door on me one day, and I didn't like that. I have the right to the privacy of my body from any female in this world, given the fact that I am a male person, and that doesn't allow for access to that. At the same time, I unfortunately cannot remember the female officer's name who destroyed my rights in every way and I believe that is something that jail cells can do today. It's one of the reasons that we sort of like the current Batman series that sort of markets the fact that law enforcement officers and their mental health practitioners are a little bit on the evil side. We all know the story of Sandman, and I'm not talking out of line. I'm trying to help relate cultural society and cultural subtext to issues that are very real in the communities in which we deal. Now, if I talk to you in a way that is illiterate, then please, by all means, educate me on the word that I might have misused or abused. But at the same time, if you like what I have to say, please like my videos online, because everyone needs a little bit of help with publicity today. As a homeless person, as a person who is a victim of cybercrime, identity theft, and fraud, I am looking for that positive support, that positive cheer of saying, keep going, or gambare, as we say in Japanese. But openly, when I talk about my life, I'm really hoping and encouraging you to look at your life and decide where you're going to be when your life is closer to being through. You see, every hum human being who's an employee will eventually time out of what they're doing to make an earning in the world today. To make earnings is one thing, to make income is another, and to make revenue or for a business or some residual income is totally different. You see, most people don't look at how do I acquire wealth. The beauty of the Kiyosaki family is that Robert Kiyosaki has written a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad that can help people to ascertain how to develop or how wealth in America is actually provided to most people. And it's a great book that talks about cash flow quadrants, which technically is the second follow-up book. It's a $10 item that every family should have. And the truth is, he has a teen series as well. It's kind of like Dr. Phil McGraw, who has books that are for adults, and then a few books for children that were written by his children, so they could get a little bit of residual income from their authorship. But when it comes to me and I share my details, the liars who are pretending to be me around the community, the liars in law enforcement that like to allege that they have people who are me, are the liars of America. I have a serious addiction to the defund the police program that many people have put across the land because I believe in our military. And our military is typically well trained in how to regard people, human life, and international rights because they are often deployed overseas where the social mores, social subtext, social construct, and social nuance is completely different. 
We know this from Good Morning Vietnam, an old-time story with the late Robin Williams was a radio DJ and how he was saved by a local boy who knew what was going on in the community and they didn't want to lose him for the music that he played. It was a rough film for most of us to watch, just like many of those old-time history films that teach us about the past, encourage us in every way, because what we learned is how far we've come today.